Hey guys, and welcome to another episode here on the Learning Droid of our exercise playlist. Last episode we had a look at push-ups or press-ups, this episode we're going to have a look at sit-ups. Certain varieties of sit-ups are also called crunches, I'm going to have a look at those as well. Once again, as with push-ups, they're a really basic simple exercise, really popular, lots of people do them. Once again, there are a couple of different varieties, not as many, but a couple of different varieties of sit-up. And again, they change how the, how the exercise focuses on muscles. Some sit-ups sit -ups focus on your rex abdominis, or your transverse abdominis, or your obliques. And the ones that a lot of people focus on are the ones that are the rectus abdominis, which are the ones in the middle. This gives us the quintessential six-pack, although there are eight muscles there actually, or eight packs of muscles. The two final packs of muscles are down just, below, just between your legs, and they're just in front of the groin, or just sort of in front of the groin or muscle or groinal bones. Um, and no matter how many sit-ups you do, you're not going to be able to show off a great six-pack. Sit-ups are important because they will develop the muscles for the six-pack, but to show off a six-pack, you have to have a low body fat percentage because most people carry a majority of their fat around the middle of their body. It's just an evolutionary trait that human beings have. Our fat goes around here and it goes on the outside of the muscles. Now, a lot of men have fat on the inside of the muscles as well, so another common trait, but fat on the outside of the muscles will hide your six-pack. So if you want a six-pack, you have to lose the fat. And I'm not talking about people who are big. I mean, I myself am not a huge person. I'm a little bit overweight, but I'm not a huge person. My body fat is something like 12%, 13%, something like that. And I would have to lose more than half of my body fat to show off a six pack. I have strong stomach muscles, but I'd have to lose more than half of my body fat to show off a six pack. So when you think about if you want a six pack, you, it's more important that you moderate your weight. And I mean, I'm not encouraging you to lose a lot of body fat. To get a six pack to show off really well, you actually have to be so low on body fat that a lot of people will find it affects their hormones. A healthy body fat percentage for men is about between eight and 10% or between six and 10%, something like that. And for women is double what it is for men. Because you need a certain amount of fat to store vitamins and a certain amount of fat just of its own to produce the hormones you need for your body to run properly. This is why a lot of really, really high athletes have problems with um, puberty and things, because they don't have body fat to support the production of hormones. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be a really high level athlete, but it is a consideration. As I said on my previous video with different kinds of exercise, there being bonuses and natives and some being dangerous and some being not dangerous, and the fact that all of them have dangers inherent and it's up, up to a choice. Same with wanting a six-pack, it's a choice. So with sit-ups, some of them will focus on the rex abdominis, which is a, the six-pack muscle, although there's eight. The transverse abdominis, which are the two muscles that come round and join up in the middle. And these partially work with the forwards and back, but they're also involved in side-to-side -side and rotational movements as well of the core. And then there's the transverse abdomini, the side muscles, and these are involved in lateral bending and slightly in the twisting, so they get involved in the twisting as well. And which push-ups you use are dependent upon what you want to exercise, or sorry, which sit-ups you use are dependent on what muscles you want to exercise and how you want to exercise them. Different muscles exercise differently depending on what you do and what you use. And so we're going to have a look at a few basics. There's also some common mistakes that make the push or make the sit-ups, God, I keep saying push-ups, behave, make the sit-ups more or less effective and also make them more or less dangerous. And we'll have a look at those common mistakes as well. So we all know the basic sit-up. This is the one that you see in all the sorts of movies and things and in lots of books and it's a good sit-up. It's all pretty simple. Um, we'll have a quick look at it. So from here, 
you lie back with your feet on the floor, nice and comfortably. You should be aiming to have like a 90 degree angle in your knees and your feet should be comfortable on the floor. And you lie back and then you do a sit up. Now where you put your arms depends on personal choice. Some people like to cross their arms, some like to put their arms beside their head, some like to put their arms in front, some like to put their arms by their sides. It does have a minor effect on the sort of the muscle structure and the, the way your arms are does have a minor effect on how the muscles position themselves and what they're levering against. But it's not a huge effect, so it's a personal personal preference. Personally, I just like to have my hands in tight. Sometimes I'll cross them, sometimes I'll have them by my side, sometimes by my head. Don't grab your head. This is a common mistake. See, people see this here. And they think, oh, grab my head and pull. Don't. Never grab hold of anything when you're doing exercises like this. Unless you're grabbing hold of weights. <laughs> Unless that's part of the exercise. My hands should be nice and relaxed and I'm not keeping my back straight and lifting myself up. Because that's using these muscles here to literally just pull myself up. What I'm doing is I'm lifting my shoulders off the floor and I'm compressing my stomach. I'm doing a sit up. I'm sitting up using my stomach muscles. So I shouldn't be using anything else other than these to pull myself up. And what will happen is this will bend. And that's fine, it's meant to. So what happens if I keep my hands out of the way is as I sit up, that bends. And I was very bad there, I looked down at my stomach. <laughs> and that puts pressure on your neck. Keep your head nice and straight. Once again, the shoulders and neck should be nice and straight and relaxed. If you want to touch your knees, that's fine. A lot of people like to do that. So I'm just tensing my stomach and using it to pull myself up. Basic sit up. The sort of common variation on that is the crunch where you lift your legs up off the floor and have them at about 90 degrees again. So we've got another 90 degree angle, just a slightly different one. And it works exactly the same way. I crunch my stomach up. What a lot of people make the mistake of doing is they tense their neck. So they're crunching their neck as well. And another common mistake is people over sit up. We have this thing in sports and fitness videos and sports and fitness demonstrations and things where people sit all the way up so their chest touches their knees like this but the fact of the matter is that doesn't help the exercise at all this exercise is designed to work your stomach muscles that's why people do sit-ups is they want to work their stomach but the moment I start using this joint to bend my hip joints and my pelvis I'm not using my stomach anymore so if you watch, as I sit up, that's my stomach, that's not. That's my hips, that's my legs, doing that. That's these muscles here and my back muscles that have sat me up this far. So you don't actually need to sit up all the way. You need to sit up till this is crunched, nice and tight. Avoiding prodding the fat, chubby stomach of the uh, overweight man who is doing sit-ups. <laughs> so we want to work the, this bit of our body. Now, the leg position is sort of important. A lot of people say it's not. A lot of people say you can have your feet like this, or you can have your feet like this, or you can have your feet like this, but it is important. The two common positions, this one and this one, are different in which parts of your rectus abdominis work. As I said, there are eight muscle groups in your rectus abdominis. Two upper ones, two middle ones, two lower ones, and two groin packs of muscles in your rectus abdominis. And depending on where you put your legs, it depends on which ones are working. In this position, it's primarily the middle and lower ones that are doing the pulling. In this position, it's primarily the upper ones and the groin ones that are doing the pulling to bring myself into the sitting position. So to work all the packs in your uh, rectus abdominis, all the muscle packs, 
You should do both. There's no reason you can't do both. Personally, I, I encourage people to do both because then you're working the full set of your rectus abdominis. Now, there are all sorts of other variations you can do. You can have the sit-up, double punch, but again, I'm sitting up too far. My stomach muscles aren't tense here. I'm not tensing my stomach at all. And in fact, the mistake a lot of people make is they throw themselves. So what they'll use is they'll use their shoulders and their chest muscles to push up like that. So they're pushing with this. And I don't use my stomach at all. In those two movements, I didn't use my stomach muscles at all. So my stomach muscles haven't been worked at all. So the whole point of this exercise, working my stomach muscles, has disappeared. So there's no real point to it. So if you want to do punch push-ups, think oh, punch sit-ups, sorry, think about it. You want to work your stomach. So come up, tense your stomach, one, two, come back down. Tense your stomach, one, two, come back down. Try not to crunch your shoulders in, um, my sake, try not to crunch your shoulders in, one, two. So we're using this pack of muscles the whole time. Now, other variations, apart from this position and this position, are variations to look more at the uh, transverse abdominis and the obliques, the side muscles. So, the way to work the side muscles, or the way that you work the obliques and the transverse at the same time, is we come into this position, and we just roll it over onto the side. So there we go, my legs are on the side, in a nice comfortable position, I shall turn so that the exercise is in the same general position. Now you see I've got both my shoulders on the floor still. And this exposes this bit, which is my oblique and my transverse. Oblique here, transverse here. So here's my transverse and here's my oblique. They do actually overlap, but roughly the two positions. And again, we just do a crunch. Now I haven't even lifted this shoulder off the floor, but already that muscle is pulling nice and hard. That's a nice hard tense on that muscle. And again, because it's only one side, we have to do both sides because it's a single side exercise. So we do exactly the same number of exercises on both sides. Again, try and keep your head nice and straight. Don't crunch your chin in. Don't arch your neck back. Tense this muscle up, nice and relaxed from here up. Keep this muscle nice and tense. And then relax down again. So you're exercising the different parts. There's also rotation sit-ups, where instead of coming up straight, I come up across, across, across. And that combines the transverse and the rectus abdominis. A little bit of work with the obliques, but mainly the transverse and the rectus abdominis, the middle and the next act rather than the side muscles. So basically that exercise, as you come up, as you tense this, you just reach out with one hand to the opposite knee. Reach out with one hand to the opposite knee. So, I mean, it's quite a common one for martial artists and boxers, because we have this natural position, this cross punch, punch position. So, it's quite a good one. There's many other variations. But now we'll talk about making push-up or making sit-ups. I am really, really annoyed with myself for constantly saying that. Now we're going to talk about making sit-ups a little bit more difficult or a little bit easier. So if you want to make sit-ups a little bit easier, there's not actually that much you can do. Crunches are a bit easier than full sit-ups. But there's a variation you can do. So an easier variation to get yourself to start working your stomach. And this one's also very good if you have minor back problems or if you have slight back pain because your muscles in your back aren't set up. When you come into the push, uh, sit up position and you bring your legs up, under your back you'll find there's a hollow where you can fit your hand. What you do is you simply tense your stomach muscles and push down until that hollow disappears, until you can feel your back on the floor. 
and then relax. Push down until you can feel the back on the floor and relax. Push down and relax. And that's a very, very easy introduction to tensing your stomach muscles and getting the tense. It also helps flatten out your back when you're doing sit-ups, which helps if you've got minor issues with your back, such as muscle imbalance. Making sit-ups harder, there are all sorts of different things you can do. Because I'm not using my hands, I can hold weights. So a pair of dumbbells or a pair of kettlebells held in your hands. I don't recommend holding them up or out. Simply hold the kettlebells or dumbbells in your hands. A couple of kilograms is all you really need. Cross your hands so the weights are sitting on your shoulders. And that will give you the added weight to the part of your body you're lifting off the floor for the sit-up. That gives you some extra weight. Other ways of making it harder? I suppose there's ways you can use resistance bands, you could use weight vests, um, but there aren't really that many positional changes you can make to make sit-ups harder. You can buy all sorts of gadgets that you hold with your hands and brace against your knees and do a sit-up and it makes it harder. They're fine if you want to use them, I have nothing against them. They are essentially just ways of adding extra resistance. Usually they use stretchy resistance tubing, so stretchy rubber tubes, and then a mechanical setup in the big piece of plastic that you're holding. That means that you're stretching the tube as you're doing this. That's fine. If you want to use those, there's no reason not to. Weight vests, hand weights, things like that can all be used to make sit-ups harder. And then, of course, there is just repetition. More repetitions, well, although it pushes it more towards being an endurance exercise rather than a strength exercise, more repetitions will make the exercise harder. So, we do our rectus abdominis. We can also do our obliques using side sit-ups. We can use twist sit-ups to do our transverse and our rectus. So there's all sorts of different things we can do. Now, common mistakes and errors. I've already touched on them a little bit. Uh, common mistakes and errors done when you do sit-ups and crunches um, are throwing the neck or throwing the shoulders. We've already talked about that. That is where I'm doing a sit-up or a crunch and I'm throwing this up just negates the purpose of the exercise. It also puts strain on your neck. The other common one is crunching the neck in or stretching the neck back as you do a sit-up or crunch. So as you do a sit-up, you're crunching your neck in first. Sit up. This is a really bad idea. It's made worse if you're holding your head and doing that. So you see, I'm pulling on my head. And essentially, I'm just attempting to pull myself up off the floor by my neck, which isn't a good idea. Same with stretching your neck back. If you do a sit-up and you're looking back, that's not a good idea. Same with the same as when we do the push-ups. When you do a sit-up, basically from here up, you should have a nice straight, relaxed spine. This bit bends because we're doing a sit-up, but up here should be nice, straight, relaxed neck and head. The other common mistake is people who throw their hands to get up. It doesn't help at all. There's no real point to it. And sitting up all the way as well. If you sit up all the way by just mean muscle strength, there's a point where you're switching from using your stomach muscles to using your thigh muscles. That is a weakness. And I don't like it. Some people say, oh, sit up all the way every time, all the way every time. You should always sit up all the way every time. Once again, it's one of those things that it comes down to an issue of personal preference. I personally think that it is not good for you to sit up all the way every time. Um, I think there is a weakness in the lower back at the point of switching from using your stomach muscles to your leg muscles. And I also think it takes the emphasis away from the stomach muscles. Once you get past the point where your stomach muscles are working, there's no point to do a sit up in my opinion. But again, that's opinion. It varies from person to person. It varies from who you talk to. So 
the final sort of dangerous kind of sit-up, I suppose, is more for the side sit-ups. And that is if you're doing side sit-ups and as you sit up, you're kind of turning your head sideways, so you're almost coming up like that. Or coming up like that. You're putting a lot of strain on your neck. You should have both shoulders on the floor and you should sit up straight. So you're looking the way you're going. Or technically you should be looking slightly up as well because you're not bending your neck forwards. You should be looking slightly up at the ceiling. And that gives us that tense there without putting any risk to our neck. So the main risks in sit-ups are really to your neck and to your spine. Um, mainly to your neck. And the very, very worst thing and the thing I encourage anyone who does a sports class or does warm-ups or anything like that with kids is do not let them hold on to their heads and if you're a person who does sit-ups and you find yourself holding on to your head stop <laughs> because you are really putting a lot of strain on your neck and it's really not a good idea this bit where you see professional people doing sit-ups and they have their hands by the side of their head literally they're touching the side of their head with their fingertips they're not holding on to anything if they try to bring their neck up, their hands move with it, but there's no pull here. There's nothing to grip onto. Um, it's just not a good idea to be pulling on your neck when you're doing exercises. So have a nice uh, day. Enjoy your day. Thank you for watching The Learning Droid. Thank you for watching the channel. And I'll see you next time.